Um, so I'm actually a scientist who is working with Raj Thacker, the University of Oxford. Um, some of you have probably heard of him, as he's also a patron of this charity. And um, as Joe has just said, I uh, received the Research Fund Award in 2013 for this work, for which I'm very thankful. So my project is based on MEN1. Um, so some of this was talked about a bit earlier, but just a bit of a recap about this project. So MEN1 is a disorder that is caused by mutations in the MEN1 gene, which leads to the loss of its transcribed protein, menin. Um, this disease is characterised by the occurrence of tumours involving two or more endocrine glands, the same patient. And one thing that's complicated this is that these three organs, as um, shown here, are the three most commonly occurring. So, for example, the parathyroid in up to 90% of patients, which can occur from 20 years of age. Pancreatic tumours, which occur in a, quite a uh, span of people, so 30 to 70% of patients, with an age of onset of approximately over 30 years. And then pituitary tumours that occur in 30 to 40% of patients, with an age of onset over 40 years. The thing with this information is this is very variable. And I'm sure many of you here know that actually it's variable not only between families, but even within the same family, which makes things like monitoring and predicting outcomes very, very difficult indeed. So um, actually Raj Thacker, as again was mentioned earlier, basically a group of clinicians got together and came up with sort of the optimum screening program that people should undergo. Um, so these clinical guidelines, as they were called, recommend some pretty intensive clinical, biochemical and radiological screening. Um, and this is highlighted here in this circle on the right hand side. Many of you, I'm sure, are going through this. Um, but basically, biochemical analysis involves annual blood tests. So, for example, for the parathyroid tumours, which is um, up here, as you can see, um, plasma, calcium and um, pituitary hormone levels, um, or parathyroid hormone, hormone levels even, um, can be good indicators of tumours. So actually, um, the, just the blood test can be good for this condition. However, for um, pituitary and pancreatic tumours, as again is highlighted here, although we have um, blood tests that are available to be indicators of the um, tumour occurrence, actually a lot of these tumours can occur as non-functioning, i.e. they don't secrete hormones which can be detected in the blood which means that you need another method of detecting them, which is why um, MRI scans commonly are used, as well as other radiological methods. Um, and of course, this is intensive. They can be um, annually for a lot of patients. And actually, if you've been diagnosed as part of a family, you can be undergoing this from as young as five years of age. And actually, for other sort of rarer types of tumours, so for example, the lung tumours um, down here and adrenal tumours, actually, the CT or radiological scanning is the most common way which we can detect these. There are no reliable um, blood tests. So this basically is saying that the identification of a reliable blood biomarker that would actually eliminate the need for some of this regular radiological screening is really, really important. And that is an area of research that we're trying to move towards at the moment. So we're taking a novel approach in our group and we're looking at microRNAs. So I'll try and explain to you what those are. So microRNAs are basically small, single-stranded RNA molecules that regulate gene expression. So this diagram down here just shows you. So as I'm sure many of you are aware, you have um, genes encoded in your DNA sequence, from which in a normal situation, your um, gene will be converted into what is called a messenger RNA, which basically acts as a template to form the functional protein output of that gene. Whereas your DNA also contains what are called regulatory sequences. So not just genes, but things like these microRNAs. And instead of being converted into a template for a protein, what these actually do is are converted into molecules that can regulate um, this gene expression. So for example, these microRNAs, these small sequences, actually combined to these messenger RNAs, which prevents them being able to act as a template. So you actually get no protein um, occurring from these. So actually, it basically means you get no function occurring from this gene. Um, why microRNAs have been interesting to us is that actually people have been beginning to show that these actually have distinct profiles in different tumour types. 
Um, and these profiles can actually be associated with diagnosis, staging, progression, prognosis and response to therapies. Not only this, but in 2007 it was actually observed that these microRNAs can be released or leaked from the tumours and therefore can actually be occurring and are stable in the circulation. On top of this, actually one of the things that's been coming to light more recently is that actually menin, the um, protein that is lost in MEN1 patients, has actually been shown to regulate the expression of specific microRNAs. So we're hoping that this actually not only as a tumour biomarker may actually have potential to find a menin-specific biomarker. So the aim of this project was to determine if microRNAs can be detected in the plasma of patients with MEN1-related tumours and whether they have potential to be a tumour biomarker. So this project that I was given the money for was a pilot study, basically. This is a completely novel method for us to look at in this area. Um, so we haven't got all the way through these steps, but this is our overall plan for where we're trying to go with the project. So for this initial pilot study, step one, we just wanted to identify four MEN1 patients and also four unaffected relatives in order to compare their microRNA profiles. So we then went on to confirm their MEN1 mutation status and that the fact that the uh, unaffected control equally did not have the mutation. We then wanted to isolate the microRNAs from the blood of these patients, determine the expression of these microRNAs, and that's basically to what this project was funded, but we also want to go beyond that, and that is also to validate these um, potential microRNA biomarkers and then also to test them in a much larger cohort because obviously four patients is not going to be enough to get an overall um, result that could be applied in the clinic. So step one of this, sample identification, we basically found um, four pairs of patients, two male, two female, used for our initial studies. We confirmed all of these carried an MEN1 mutation and that their unaffected relative, which was sex matched and age matched, was close as possible. Uh, also, these patients, to know, all of them had parathyroid tumours and all of them had a type of pancreatic tumour and actually one had a pituitary tumour as well. So, obviously, the biomarker we're looking for here isn't just for a specific tumour type. We're looking for a global biomarker that could actually be um, occurring in any type of MEN1 tumour. So then moving on to step three, we wanted to try and isolate these microRNAs. So to do this, we basically get a blood sample from the patient. We remove all the um, blood cells, so both red and white blood cells, to leave just the liquid that they're suspended in. And from that, we can actually extract RNAs, including these microRNAs. Now, microRNAs are also quite important because they're small. They're actually a lot more stable than any other form of RNA in the sample which means that, as this diagram here shows, we can get a very clean peak, which is these small RNAs here, compared to um, any larger messenger RNAs. So actually, we can get a very pure, isolated sample from these. So now we have a sample. We found the patients. What did we want to do with it? So. This work was all done in collaboration with the Oxford Genomics Centre because there's a lot of bioinformatics and things that are involved in this. Um, but basically, our overall aim is we wanted to look at the abundance of microRNAs in the plasma of patients and compare these to their unaffected relative to see if there were any with differential levels. We did this um, basically by sequencing. So sequencing is just detecting the individual um, components that make up each of these RNAs so we can work out specific um, which ones they are. Um, we then just did a direct comparison between these in the patients and the unaffected relatives and put together a list of all the ones that we saw with differential expression and then compared it across the four patient pairs as well so we could try and find some that were common because obviously the aim of this is to find a biomarker that can be used in any patient in any family. So this table at the bottom here just highlights sort of the most highly up and down regulated microRNAs we found in these patients. The numbers are slightly irrelevant, it doesn't really matter. But the point of this is that actually we did manage to find some. So although this is a small patient number, there are multiple tumour types, we did manage to find distinct microRNAs that could be seen differentially expressed in the patients and controls consistently across the pairs that we looked at. 
obviously this isn't um, the end of the project. We also want to see actually genuinely could these have any use in the clinic for diagnosing patients. So we basically just took the two most highly upregulated and the two um, most downregulated. This was also interesting to us because the two that most highly upregulated have actually been associated with tumours previously. Um, and although the top one of these has been seen downregulated in tissue of patients, because obviously these are being released into um, the bloodstream, it doesn't necessarily correlate that you'll have the same level of expression in the tumour as you would have in your circulation as well. So we didn't rule that out at this point. And actually the other one um, we found, which is this 5823P, um, actually has been shown to be expressed in um, pituitary tumours previously. So it looks like it could be promising. What actually was particularly of interest to us, because as I alluded to earlier, that menin has been shown potentially to be involved in the regulation of these um, microRNA expression, is that the two most significantly downregulated microRNAs that we found, actually there is nothing published previously on them whatsoever. Which, considering there is limited information on the role of MEN1 and microRNAs, it could be that actually this could have a significant biological influence as well as being used as a biomarker for diagnosis. So originally this, um, we did the sequencing in four patient pairs. So we have gone on to look at a further eight patient pairs. And this graph here just indicates so far what we found. So this black line here just represents the control samples. And the two in red are the two that we um, in the sequencing saw upregulated, and the two in green are the ones downregulated. Now, unfortunately, in the further validation, the two that were upregulated in the sequencing, actually, um, we didn't really see a difference. As you can see, they're going across this black line. Um, so they may not have a use in the clinic. However, what was interesting to us is that the two that we saw downregulated, that again has nothing previously published on, actually were both significantly um, below the control sample here. So actually may have potential that in all eight patients that we compared them to, all of them were underneath um, the control sample. And again, this was the um, most highly downregulated seen in the sequencing, which shown consistently here that it is actually more downregulated than the other one. So this indicates to us that these actually may have potential use in the clinic. Um, obviously, we need to go on and validate far more patients, but actually, we have found two novel microRNAs that could um, be used in potential screening later on. So, there is a lot more work to do, but in summary, this project has shown that microRNAs can be extracted and detected in the um, plasma of MEM1 patients that we can see differences in these microRNA um, expression levels between the MEM1 patients with tumours and healthy unaffected relatives. And we found two microRNAs that may play a role in MEM1 that could potentially make up a set of biomarkers and actually could have some interesting biological functions in the disease. So future work, the biggest thing, obviously we want to increase the number of patients um, that we sequence to look at their microRNA levels compared to the relatives and also to um, do this in more tumour types because we were hoping to have something very global. Um, we then also want to validate um, the expression of these microRNAs in a much higher number of patients and also to absolutely confirm whether these are going to be biomarkers or not. The biggest thing we want to do is to examine the levels of patients both pre and post treatments <coughs> because that will confirm if they um, go down when um, patients have the tumours, when the tumour is removed, if they come back up again, that will confirm to us that actually they do have a very um, useful clinical relevance. So that is my project in brief. I apologise, it's very scientific. So if anyone has any questions or there's uh, anything they didn't understand, I will be around for the rest of the day, so you can ask me anything about it. Um, but anyone in science doesn't work alone, so I would... Uh, just got a few acknowledgements here. So um, Raj Thacker, whose lab I work in, um, and then this is the rest of the team on the uh, right-hand side there. And then also to the Oxford Genomics Centre, who actually did the um, bioinformatics for me. And of course, thank you very much to Amend for awarding me the money so I could actually perform this project.